Christian Sands, I'm glad we have a chance to talk about your music and the tour that you're doing with the Monterey Jazz Festival. And before we start with the specifics of this given tour or where your career might be taking you, I want to ask you about something that you posted on your Facebook account in August, and it was a quote by Langston Hughes. Oh, yeah. And you said, an artist must be free to choose what he does, certainly, but he must also never be afraid to do what he might choose. How does that, yeah. that thought process serve as a guiding principle for you? And if it does, how does that inspire the choices you make both in the short term and the long term for you as a person and as a musician? Well, it really speaks into just the reflection of who you are as an individual and just being secure in your decisions and your creative process and being truly who you are. You know, uh, for myself, it's been a journey um, discovering that, I mean, I mean, for everyone, you know, uh, but me as a creative, it's something where uh, you believe one thing and then all of a sudden something, maybe something in your life or some event or or something you've come across changes that or shifts that. And so now you have to discover what does that mean? How do I take in uh, this information? How do I use this? Is this information usable? You know, uh, and it's it's that way with music. It's that way with life. It's that way with with anything, with relationships, with people, with, uh, you know, as a performer, with people that you meet, uh, audience members, uh, band members. I mean, you know, life takes you on a different journey. And so, uh, what I try to do is to just say, hey, okay, this is a obstacle and this is a challenge and let's rise to the occasion and see if we can do it, you know? And sometimes you'd be surprised that you actually will rise even higher than you thought you would. Well, I guess in movies, we would call those plot twists and, and in jazz yes. music, we would call it improvisation. Absolutely, absolutely, absolutely. Now, as part of the Monterey Jazz Festival on tour, you get to work with Dee Dee Bridgewater and Kurt Elling, who I think we can safely say, you know, are standard bearers of heavily rooted jazz traditions. Absolutely. Um, yes. In what they do. What is the dialogue you hope to create with them between their traditions and the direction you would like to see music go? Well, the great thing is uh, uh, on the first, on, on the number one is uh, we're all friends. So uh, I've known them for quite some time. Uh, I've looked up to them as mentors. I've looked up to them as leaders in this music and, you know, people that have paved the way for uh, the generations after them to present and express themselves the way they do. Uh, so with that being said, it's an honor to be making music with them and to be uh, the musical director for them. Um, and it's a lot of fun because they're very... Uh, vocal and they're very animated and they're very charismatic and uh they're very involved which is wonderful because uh they will let me know um things that they want to try the great thing about working with Dee, Dee and kurt is that they are so open to trying new things if anything more new things than what i i feel maybe some audience members are comfortable with which is an amazing thing because me being in a different generation, I can push and pull in and to challenge them in a way. And again, we talked about plot twists or rising to the occasion. They are more than happy to do so. So it's actually a really fun uh, environment to work in and to uh, uh, just collaborate with these two artists is really incredible. Now, what is an example of something that Didi might want to do that would be outside the comfort zone of what people might expect her to do? Oh, well, I mean, it's, it's, it could be a number of different things. I mean, for example, you know, uh, we love everything that Dee Dee does, but a lot of people know that, okay, well, Dee Dee swings, right? Or she does these things. And Dee Dee might say, well, you know what? I kind of don't want to do that right now. You know, I kind of want to do this, or maybe I want to do a rock set, or maybe I want to do something else, you know? And so she has the choices and she has the ability to do all of it. And we will definitely love all of it, but you might not be used to it. You know, and it's, so it's one of those things just as an artist where when you when people are used to a certain type of art that you've created and you want to shift or you feel like you want to shift and some people might not be not necessarily OK with it, but they might need a second, you know. And so with Dee, Dee and with Kurt, the wonderful thing about them is that they are just endless pools of information and ability. You know, so if I say to Dee, Dee, hey, you know, I'm thinking about doing this Jefferson airplane thing, she's like, absolutely cool. You know, or if I say to Kurt, you know, I'm thinking about doing this uh, Brian and Knight thing, 
you know, like I, I heard this and I want to kind of do an arrangement of it. He's like, absolutely. Let's try that. Let's check it out. Let's see what we can do. And if anything, it's always amazing and incredible. And it, uh, they bring such a, uh, professionalism and a certain, um, just steeped in the tradition of great art and great music. So people don't have to worry about it. And they also know how to win an audience over very easily. Absolutely. 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 And they're, they're, uh, they are uh, geniuses in that because every time, especially Dee Dee, because every time I see her just on stage, she just has people in the palm of her hands um, the minute that she walks on stage. So she's incredible. Yeah, I saw her with Bill Charlotte twice last year. Oh, yeah, just, yeah, yeah. Just with the two of them. And it's like, you don't need anything more than that when you have talent. No, like no, no. If anything, you know, Dee Dee could be there by herself and it'd just be the most amazing show in the world, you know. Uh, and so I'm just lucky I get to just play some chords behind her. <laughs> I, I've heard you play, Christian. I assume you're going to play a lot more than just some chords behind someone. That's right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Although I do miss the miss that we don't have the blue whale here any longer because that's where I know. that's where I saw you you know and enjoyed it the most was it because I love that venue. Yeah, I, I yeah. Survive COVID. Yeah, it's sad to see because uh, you know especially as an artist that was coming out of town to Los Angeles, this was a place where you know it's sort of the the uh, the metaphoric watering hole. You know, it was a place where people came to commune and people from all different walks of life came, you know, and especially uh, what I liked about it being, uh, uh, you know, on the younger side of jazz, that there was a lot of young people that were there. You know, there's a lot of people in their teens, in their uh, uh, early 20s, late 20s, 30s, you know, and there was a, it was a place where everybody got to get together and just experience something, experience music in its full potential and people writing music and like trying things out you know i mean i've gotten uh i've had a chance to see a couple of different concerts uh there when i was in town a couple of friends of mine were playing you know, theo croker you know like uh ben williams you know uh, uh, a few different people and it was just like man this is a great vibe great energy a great sounding space and so it's it's uh it's uh, i'm sad that we'll, we miss it you know but uh you know there'll be something else that is gonna uh you know blossom from these ashes here well, I certainly hope so, because, you know, Brad Meldow, for instance, is someone I love, and Jason Moran, who I know was one of your instructors Absolutely. at one point. Absolutely. They can play seven nights at the Village Vanguard in New York, but they can come to L.A. and play one night at Walt Disney Concert Hall, and that's all we get. Yeah, absolutely, right. right. And, I, and I, I, I love the Vanguard. I love the Blue Note in New York, and I wish we had a space like that out here that people would feel comfortable doing, you know, even a, a, a three or four night run. Yeah, what they're absolutely. doing two sets. That's that's what LA needs, I think. Absolutely, absolutely. And then there's that there's that new uh, newer club, Sam's First, which is actually really really wonderful. Um, it's a small club, but uh, it is absolutely a uh, beautiful space. It sounds great in there. Um, it's you know it's it's kind of out the way, but uh, it's, it's absolutely a fantastic club. If I if, if everybody gets a chance to go, I strongly suggest going just to check it out. Um, Gerald Clayton does a jam session there. I uh, believe I'm not sure what day it is. Um, I think it's on it's, Tuesday nights. I think so. Yeah, something like that. Monday or Tuesday nights, and it's really fantastic. Everybody that plays there sounds amazing. I mean, it's really kind of the closest thing we get to a place like Smalls in New York. You know, right. it would be kind of like that or the beginnings of that, you know. Right, of course. Um, now with the with these with this concert tour that you're doing, you know, we are used to jazz concerts having lots of improv improvisation and things like that. Our mm -hmm. set list sort of is there gonna be like a standard set list or and if so or if not, how do the how do the six of you choose what's gonna be the right vibe for that evening show? Well, you know, as as being the musical director, it is it is my job and my uh, duty to try to figure this out, <laughs> right? Um, and it is such a wonderful challenge to have because, uh, uh, like I said, when you're dealing with these amazing artists on stage who have these different ways of expression, um, Lakeisha Benjamin as well, uh, Yasushi Nakamura, Clarence Penn, Dee Dee Bridgewater, Kurt Elling, you know, uh, it really, the music can go anywhere. 
And so the wonderful thing is that the music can go anywhere, you know? Uh, so you will hear some standards, you will hear some original compositions. Uh, uh, during this tour, it's, we're representing the Monterey Jazz Festival. So we will be uh, paying homage to uh, the past and we will be uh, reinventing or reimagining uh, some songs that may have been performed at the festivals, you know, music by Dave Brubeck, music by Sonny Rollins, uh, Dizzy Gillespie, uh, Billie Holiday, you know, so we do have that. And then also we have our own stuff as well that we're working out as well. So uh, I am in uh, uh, my neck of music and possibilities, just in case the crowd shifts, I can say, hey, you know, cats, let's play this or let's do this or let's feature you know, Didi and Kurt on this, or let's feature uh, Lakeisha and Yasushi Nakamura on this, you know? And so there's different ways to uh, skin a cat, as they say, so. Well, I remember seeing Elvis Costello once in concert, and he's done this multiple times where he just has this giant wheel on stage. Oh, yeah. yeah and and each, <laughs> each area of the wheel has a different song on it, and they would just spin the wheel, and whatever it landed on, that's what he and his band played. Oh, that's actually kind of fun, you know? I mean, essentially, uh, it, it's sort of like that for me because I have a, a book of just, okay, these are the these are the songs that we all have. This is what we've rehearsed. This is what we haven't rehearsed, but we can probably play and it's gonna be amazing, you know, because some of the music, uh, when you've been steeped in it and it's a tradition, you just know it, you know? So you don't necessarily have to go over it sometimes. And that's some, most of the time is when the magic happens too, when you don't have anything planned. And so, uh, and that's the wonderful thing about this music, jazz music, is that most of it isn't planned. You know, I mean, you might have like, hey, let's do this song, but like within the song, anything can happen. And so uh, we pride ourselves in that. And so uh, with these individuals, like I said, with these individuals in the band, it's such a pleasure and it's such an honor to make music with these highly skilled uh improvisers because at any point it can go in a different direction and it will just you'll just be on a journey and be taken to a different place and it's such a wonderful thing well i hope lush life falls in there some place because i've heard Didi and bill do that just the two of them but with your quartet that, that you're performing oh yeah i'd love love to hear hear what that sounds like with a lot more instruments oh yeah we'll, we'll make a note of that for sure i'll, yeah. I'll write that down now <laughs> yeah <laughs> um, so on your last, your most recent album was Be Water, yes. um, and you recorded with Yasushi and with Clarence. Um, I'm assuming, therefore, that you got to choose the makeup of the three musicians who joined you to form the quartet with these, you know, who are backing up these two fine singers. Absolutely, absolutely. Uh, Yasushi and Clarence, they are my my guys, my best friends, you know, my my brothers, you know. Uh, Yasushi and I have been making music together for at least 15 years now. Um, and uh, Clarence, it hasn't been that long, but it feels that long, you know. And then the two of them have been making music together forever. So uh, whenever you're making a band, this is for anybody that's making a band, you know, whether it's an amateur band or whatever, a uh, professional band, uh, if they want to hire a band, the best thing to do is to get the bass and drums locked together. Like ask your bassist who you like playing with. Ask your drummer who you like playing with, because if the bass and drums ain't happening, your feet ain't tapping, right? So once you got that set, and Yasushi and Clarence, they sound so good. They feel really good no matter what they play. So that's really awesome. Uh, uh, and I love playing with them so much because we can go anywhere and it always feels amazing, you know? Uh, and then when you have Lakeisha Benjamin in the mix, um, Lakeisha is just phenomenal, uh, a phenomenal alto saxophonist and a lyricist and a rapper and an entertainer. I mean, she's just unbelievable. Uh, and she just brings such a great energy and a great sound and a great vibe to the entire band. And so uh, when you align that with Kurt and Dee, Dee the entire, the, you know, the entire meal is great, you know, so uh, it's going to be a lot of fun. You mean there's not going to be a roof left to Walt Disney Concert Hall? There is not going to be a roof. Uh, yeah. There might be some floor. We'll see. We'll see. But, you know, <laughs> we'll try to keep it intact. <laughs> yeah. Now, as for your own studies, I mentioned before that you worked with, with Jason Moran, but you also you know, studied with Dr. Billy Taylor, with Vijay Iyer. Mm -hmm. 
a trio of musicians who all have enormous similarities and equally enormous differences, both in terms of how they play or played and how they look at music. How do you feel your learning from them is exhibited through the work you now do as a musician? I mean, I hope uh, many different ways. I mean, uh, with Dr. Billy Taylor, it's business. You know, um, I've learned a lot from him on the business side of it, you know, on just being an artist, on being uh, in meetings, being in the boardroom, uh, uh, curating different things, you know, uh, same thing for Jason Moran, you know, same thing for Vijay Iyer, you know, uh, uh, the wonderful thing about Vijay and Jason and myself, we're all products of Dr. Taylor. You know, uh, Dr. Taylor was the one that came before us that really established the groundwork on what we do as far as pianists, what we do as far as creativity, as composers, as arrangers, as uh, people that curate music and, and bring music into a place that may not have anything that exists there. You know, Dr. Taylor had the Jazzmobile in uh, New York. He had, uh, he was the our, um, artistic director in uh, at the Kennedy Center as well you know, for many years. So uh, this is someone who has the brain and the the uh, scope to say, this is what's necessary. Um, he was also very instrumental with Wynton Marsalis with Jazz and Lincoln Center. So it was someone who, he was someone who just had that, who brought that out, who taught that by doing. Um, and so when you get to Jason Moran, me studying with Jason Moran, uh, Pianistically, uh, it was still steeped in the tradition. It was just a different version of it, you know? Uh, and what he brings to it is, is visual art. And he brings a uh, very different, uh, uh, I won't even say different. It's just a, it's, it's a, it's the other hand. You know, if you have the right hand, it's just the left hand. That's it. You know, um, it's a beautiful uh, compliment to that. And then Vijay Iyer is also sort of in the middle of that. Um, but I mean, I've also had uh, teachers like Dave Brubeck. I've also had teachers like Jerry Allen as well, who was very instrumental. And they all have shaped how I interpret, how I present the music, how I talk about the music, how I feel about the music, uh, the possibilities that you could have. The great thing about uh, Jason Moran is Jason Moran lets you know that the possibilities with music as a uh as as something that's malleable uh has no limit you know i mean you can put it in any space you can bring it anywhere you can touch it if you want to you can smell it you can taste it like there's so many things that he's done that have pushed the boundary of okay well this is just what a jazz pianist does like we play piano and we write music and we do this he's like no if we want to play in a you know if we want to make music with a uh, uh you know with skateboarders you know surrounding me let's do that let's make music let's make music in the park let's make music in the subway let's make music anywhere anywhere there is anywhere there is music and so that's what that man did and uh, studying with him, studying with Vijay, studying with Gonzalo Bubulcava, studying with uh, Dave Brubeck, um, Jerry Allen, you know, all these uh, these geniuses, these artists have brought a certain way of presenting the music. And also just on the piano level are just absolutely amazing and, and who they came through as well. You know, they're all steeped in the history. When you think of Jason Moran, you think of Thelonious Monk. You know, uh, when you think of Jerry Allen, you think of Herbie Hancock, you think of Bud Powell, you think of all these other pianists. When you think of Dr. Billy Taylor, you think of Art Tatum, you think of uh, uh, Earl Hines, you think of uh, Errol Garner, you think of all these pianists. When you think of uh, Count Basie, you think of Fats Waller, you know, so there's all these people that come through, you know, Duke Ellington, you know, and so now we get to me. And so hopefully you think of all these people when you hear me, Thelonious Monk, all of my influences, all the people that I love, all the people that I uh, admire, all the people that I respect as well. You know, uh, when you go hear any pianist you know, or anybody, you know, you want to at least understand like, okay, well, I hear that. I hear that. I hear that. I hear the tradition from that place into here and where it will go. What do you think of when you think of your music? I ah, just think of me. <laughs> <laughs> that's, the, that's the honest answer. I think of me. I think of just what I've been through in my life and, and where I would like to go. And so that's that's my music. So anytime you, you listen to me, you're hearing me be uh, honest me. 
Now, I know you've you've talked multiple on multiple occasions about Dr. Taylor, Taylor telling you that one of your jobs is about bringing the audience along with you. Mm -hmm. What are the challenges that you and any other jazz musician faces in accomplishing that? And what do you think is the best way to to realize that advice he gave you? I mean, uh, I think it's it's something that you have to have uh, patience and awareness to do. You know, uh, and some people, you know, some some artists don't care, right? Some artists like I play what I play, and it is what it is, and you like it or you don't. You know, and some artists, well, I want to bring you into the fold, so this is how we do that. I think there's different versions of it. Um, with Dr. Billy Taylor, I mean, I would watch him before playing a song talk about what you were going to hear before you played it. You know, he would say, in the A section, you're going to hear swing, and then it's going to change into a bossa nova, and then from this bossa nova, we're going to play uh, back to the melody, and then we're going to give it to the bass solo. Like, he would literally break it down for you, <laughs> and and he would do it all, and you're like, wow, I mean, yeah, he did all that. And then you get some people that, that don't say anything you know, and just play, you know, which is also a, a, an experience in itself as well. So it really depends on how you want to present the music, how you want to do it. I mean, I do a little bit of both, you know, uh, sometimes I feel like talking and I say, this is what you're going to hear. And sometimes I don't, sometimes I'll tell the audience, you know, I'm not going to tell you, I'm going to play. You're just going to have to just uh, be open and, and, and listen to it and see what you think. Cause I know you're going to like it, you know? And so, so that's what that is. Yeah. <laughs> Well, and the nice thing is with a live with a live performance, they can't shazam that to try to figure out what you're playing. They're just going to have to right. sort it out on their own. They just got to sort like, what song is this? You know, and then they might not know. And, and if they like it enough, they'll say, hey, you know, this is something that I like. And the wonderful thing about it, too, is if they don't like it, if we decide to play it again, it won't sound like that the last time we played it. So it's always different every single time. So, uh, yes, you know, it's one of those, it's one of those art forms where uh, you just have to be in each moment, uh, fully in each moment. And it can be difficult for some people, but uh, if you allow yourself to just be open and to relinquish that control, you're going to have a great time. It's been a couple of years since you've had a, a new album out. Um, I know that on your Instagram account, you posted that on January 1st, it was time to start new work. You know, yes. what can we look forward to after this tour? Oh, there's a lot. There's a lot of uh, new music. I've been writing a lot of new music. Uh, I'm working on a couple of different projects. Well, I will be uh, working on a couple of different projects, just preparing for it right now. Um, and so be on the lookout for good things. I have a couple of couple of albums that I'm trying to do this year. So you might get more than one, you know, uh, which will be uh, a lot of fun. Uh, it's a lot of work, but uh, I'm, I'm excited. I'm inspired. You know, now I live in Los Angeles. So now there's new experiences and new, uh, new feelings and new uh, things to write about, you know, and so I'm looking forward to um, presenting my findings and my experiences and, uh, you know, just, just having a ball uh, creating. And just when you thought January was going to be sunny and a change from from you know what you might have been used to on the East Coast, you get a big wet storm. Oh yeah, I was very surprised. I was very surprised at how much rain uh, is here. You know, um, I I came back from New York. New York was about ten degrees, and I was like, okay, it's cold. It hasn't snowed because it's so cold, and and all right. But I'm getting back to LA. It's going to be a nice, comfortable. It's going to be sunny. It's going to be fine. Got back and downpour rain every day <laughs> which is but you need it you know la needs that rain so you know i'm not complaining on it absolutely one yeah. of the things i like about talking to artists is they have other passions you know that somehow find their way into the work that they're doing and i know one of your passions is actually photography and i'm yeah. wondering how the photography finds its way into your music or perhaps how your music might find its way into your photography well, it's kind of, it's, it's, it's a little bit of both. It's uh, with photography. Um, what I love about it is, is the discovery of composition is, is looking for different, different angles to look at something, you know, uh, when you look at a building or you look at a, a plant or you look at a flower, or you look at a person, you know, uh, that person is there or that, that object or that subject is there, but it all depends on what you're really looking for out of that subject. And it's the same thing with the music. You know, when you have a song, 
okay, we have this song, whether I it's an original composition, whether it's a song that's been done countless times, you know, uh, it's okay, cool, that's the subject, but how do we make this unique? Uh, what are the angles that I need? What is the lighting that I need? What is the, the, the shading? And when I say lighting and shading, I'm talking about harmony, I'm talking about rhythm, I'm talking about, you know, how do I approach this to make it my own? How much do I need? You know, it, it's, it's very much like photography or painting, you know, where you have portraits and, you know, how many portraits have you seen? You've seen a million of them, but why is this portrait so particular or so outstanding than this one? Why is this composition so outstanding than this one? What, why does this mean something to me? Why does the Mona Lisa mean this amazing feeling to yourself like why what is that you know and and trying to understand that and so with with photography and i do that with everything with photography i also do uh i also cook as well so it's also um doing that in the kitchen everything kind of kind of uh uh goes hand in hand from cooking okay what spices do i need how do i season this how do i sear this how do i do this to create this thing and then to the end result is this great meal. The end result is this great song. The end result is this great photo, you know. Uh, on a simpler level, I just like taking photos, you know. <laughs> <laughs> and just documenting the things that I see. And so, and, and there's moments where I'm like, ah, oh, I think that's kind of cool. And so I just kind of want to document that. Yeah, I, I, I love doing photography and I haven't done it as much because I, I was a dyed in the wool, you know, film guy. Mm -hmm. so, mostly black and white and i just yeah i'm so reluctant to just dive head first into the digital world because yeah. i so love what what black and white film in particular can do absolutely and it, and it's such a beautiful thing i mean i'm i'm still you know it, it's a it's a hobby of mine and it's something that i just do just to say hey i was here in this place at that moment and this is what i saw you know um uh so shout out to all of the the photographers, you know, <laughs> because it is very difficult to do. And and I pride myself in, in experiencing new things and experiencing uh, uh, things that reflect in my music, that reflect in my life, that also reflects in the art that I create. And just taking photos, you know, it's just me taking photos. You know, I wouldn't call myself a photographer, but I would say that I, I love seeing you know, and I respect photographers. And so uh, there will definitely be some courses taken, uh, <laughs> you know, um, to, to, to make sure I'm understanding exactly what I'm looking at and, and what they're called and, and, you know, and the, you know, the, the use of exposures and how to change these things. You know, I'm, I'm very much a novice at it, but uh, uh, thanks for noticing. Of course. You know, <laughs> Yeah, you have to do that. If you're going to talk to somebody, you need to know about a wide range of things that they've, they absolutely they do and they say. And one of those was an interview you did in 2017 with Ralph A. Mariello. And you were talking about how you wanted to represent America and where I am from. And where yeah. do you see America as we start 2023? And how does that influence how you want to express yourself? Well, you know, uh, it's, it's, you know, I don't, I don't want to say, you know, it's a new year, so it's, it's time to be new, but what I will say is that as always, there's a lot, there's a lot to do in America. There's a lot, uh, and, and that's, that's a very broad statement because there is so much to do. Um, but I believe that we have the capability to do all of it. You know, we, we, uh, if anything, um, music has taught us and art has taught us is that we all have compassion. We all are looking for the same things. You know, we all are trying to reach for the same goals. We're all trying to uh, come together as one. And so we do need to remember to do that and what one means, you know? Um, and so I do believe that there is potential and I do believe that there is a way of coming together to, to um, resolve some of the issues that we have. There's also some beautiful things that we have that we've been developing that are wonderful. There's also some things that are very sensitive that we have to understand these are different times. We can't, you know, do so, or we can do these things. I mean, there's, there's, it's kind of all over the map, but I believe that with communication and with trust and with love that anything can be accomplished. And so uh, 
that's kind of what I'm looking forward to for the rest of the year. And, and with music, with art, with humanity, with society, with, with the American people, I believe that's what that is. And I believe that with that, we will be able to reflect that in the art that we create. Well, it's interesting because that, that leads very nicely into the last thing that I wanted to ask you, Christian, was I know you're a fan of mysticism of sound and music. And yes. you highlighted a couple lines, and one of them talked about about um, the more one studies the harmony of music and then studies human nature, how people agree and how they disagree, how there is attraction and repulsion, the more one sees that it is all music, which I think is yes. really terrific. Yes. What role do you think music can and should play in getting us to get past our differences and understand that we can have those differences, but our commonality is what unites us? I mean, I believe music, it, it always does that. You know, it, music has never, never not been the bridge between uh, things that have went unsaid. You know, uh, music has always been that instrument that when there are no words and there's no way to express, we do it this way. We do it through music, we do it through art, we do it through film, we do it through uh, painting, drawing, we do it through photography, we do it through different mediums. But with music, I believe it's one of the most important ways of expressing yourself because um, it really allows you to fully understand in, a, in, a, in sound what is happening. The thing is, is that you can resolve anything with music. You can resolve uh, complications. You can, you you know, but you have to be open to what that resolve is going to be, right? But you can always do it within music. I believe music is is the bridge between it all. As long as whoever is hearing it is willing to actually listen. Absolutely, yeah. absolutely. Well, I've thoroughly enjoyed our conversation. Are you all right with my posting this video on our YouTube channel? Oh, sure, for sure.